Welcome back guys. Automotive Inc. here. Um, got my first accessory besides the door sill protectors, which um, like if you saw those, those just those little Silverado protection things. Um, if you order your truck or you have it on the lot, typically the front's going to have these wheel fender liners. And I would probably say now it's always going to come with the front ones. However, on some of the trucks, the front ones are kind of this composite material. Let's take a look. So this composite material, this kind of feels like almost like a fiberglass look to it. And I love fender liners, period. But these ones, what they can have happen is they get kind of banged up, especially if you get a lot of rocks and mud. But in addition to that, say you get some like street marking paint, the paint's not gonna come off these at all. And if you try and kind of scratch at it, it's gonna start fraying. So I wouldn't mess with these if you got them. Great, protect them as long as you can. But a lot of times, you don't get them on the back. And so your fender's gonna look kind of like this. And so you'll have a lot of these holes and stuff like that. Now if you're ordering your truck from the factory, I suggest just ordering it from them. It's like 300 bucks for the front and the rear. Um, but if you don't, and you admit it, you can add the fender liner later. Now there's a lot of companies out there that make them. Uh, I like the Husky. I put them on the Ford, and I'll show you those here in just a second. Um, and you might ask yourself, well, why do I even care? This is a truck and it's made to get beat up. Well, I plan on keeping this truck for a while. Uh, dirt and sand and, and mag chloride and salt and stuff will eventually eat this paint. This paint is way thinner. Um, you can see that it doesn't even have really a, a good sheen to it. Um, so it doesn't get a lot of attention when it's in the paint booth at the factory. So what this does is it protects all this undercarriage stuff because if you put a fender liner in here, it keeps all that stuff a lot cleaner than it's going to be uh, if you don't. In addition to that, all these little pockets and holes where stuff can splatter can get places where you don't really want it to. And although I don't think that you'll um, have to get in here a ton, you will have to get in here at some point, and it's just nice to protect it. Now, if you are gonna put these liners in later, make sure you watch yourself. These peg, you know, screws are sticking down are knuckle buster, they hurt like hell. Um, but I went ahead and cleaned this because even though it's already been washed once before, uh, it just gets dirty constantly. I mean, you're getting high velocity spray underneath here from your tires. And this paint's just not gonna last as long. Go out to your truck if you don't have them and after about 60,000 miles, it's probably gonna look a lot worse than this, all right? Um, there's also like these little sharp points. So when you're in here cleaning, just be careful. Clean with a sponge or a brush, and get all that stuff. So here's into the general, and uh, you can see that this is starting to already kind of unfuzz itself. And most of them are gonna be a hard plastic like the what we're putting on here, but you can just kind of see what that looks like in say 5,000 miles. And here's how nice the, the Husky liners are gonna look after 5,000 miles. Still got a good shine and everything like that. A lot of times you're gonna reuse your factory bolts if you have factory bolts. The kit itself is gonna come with its own hardware. And these literally you can spray them with water and they come clean versus those uh, that fiber-esque looking stuff that's on them that is going to sometimes be embedded, especially grease, but grease, you can take just a sponge and some Dawn dish soap and clean these off. So for the 2020, 2022, 23, 24, they're all the same. You have the Chevy Silverado, there is your part number from Husky Liners. Um, so if you wanna pause it and get that, if you search long and hard, you can find them on the website for about $180 off of Husky Liners. I found these on um, Still Husky brand on carparts.com. Same part number because that is the Husky brand part number. And um, so, yeah, so you're going to find that on those sites. I got this set for 139 bucks, and they're going to come banded. All the hardware is going to come taped to it. Now, this kind of sticker is okay, but if there's a, uh, like there's a paper one here, I would get, try and get that off just in case there's glue or something that might seep around a corner. Um, but they're going to come like this. You can see right here, PS for passenger side. And it's going to come with all the mounting hardware. Now the mounting hardware, what I'm going to call is what I call a Christmas tree. It's just a body fastener. Um, and, uh, you know, they, it, it's basically a push type fastener that typically would grip on the metal. They give you these rubber gaskets on the back side of the metal. You're going to try and push down and I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, 
but unless, if you don't have the factory ones, you're not going to be removing any type of uh, fasteners or anything like that. And here's basically what it looks like when it's in. So I showed you the side to start with it out. And these rubber gaskets are a pain in the rump to get on. So you push this through and you go on the back side and you're going to need to reach up and push against this. Well, whatever Chevy puts on their frames, this Chevy gooey stuff, um, it's going to get all over yourself. So what I, what I opted to do is I have these kits and you can buy like a box of four or five of these fasteners from your auto parts store and they're like six, seven bucks a piece. This 415 piece set, uh, you get enough fasteners in just one little pot here. This is like $8. You get enough fasteners to basically last your lifetime. Um, in that kit, I bought another kit right there. That was like seven bucks. I've had these around for quite a while. And what I did is, because this is really hard to reach on the back side of here, because you really need to push them on with a screwdriver to get them to fasten real well. Um, as I went ahead and just used on these rear ones, they're a pain in the butt to get to. And if you ever had to get that out, you'd have to just pry them off and pry that rubber off the back. Um, shouldn't need to get in here, but I decided to just go ahead and replace these just to show you can use whatever fits in the hole and holds it tight. And I did use the, the ones that came with the Husky Lanterns on this one right there and right there. Now the, the Ford kit actually reused some, some bolts I had in there and just had to use the ones on the front. So let me get in here and show you what these look like up in there. It sure is nice to work on a clean brand new truck. Um, but you can see right here, you're gonna take like a really nice flat blade screwdriver and push those on. The reason why I don't mind using these here is because I can reach these much easier, but you can kind of see those back ones are not. And we do have timberins coming, but these timberins, because we pry them out on the Chevy, versus bolting them, this will be fine to get to these uh, underneath here and not have to take the fender liner off. But you can see like underneath here, there's even zero or no paint. So you can see that liner comes down and kind of covers everything, even kind of backs off this hole. So there can be some debris that'll get up in there, but it'll protect that in the long run. Now you can see, like I said, this just puts a nice finished look to it. You don't have to take any of these fasteners out. There's holes that basically flop on the other side. And what you're going to do is you're going to tip the liner in bottom back first and go up and then you're just going to have to kind of muscle these in. That's why I suggest everybody have a good pair of just garage gloves, maybe with some armor on the knuckles so you can, you're going to beat your knuckles up if you try and do this without it. There are again those sharp screws, but you see how they have these bumps for them? No more. You can get in here and wash this thing and really, unless you're punching the metal, it really helps with cleaning and and I would definitely suggest even if it's brand new is cleaning that off spraying it down uh, You don't need to wax it, but I use some spray and wax after it's um, Why it's wet just to kind of spray it down and protect it. It's gonna be protected indefinitely back here But uh, I think it just looks good. I mean there's finished and there's what it looks like when you start So I mean it just covers up that whole section underneath there and here in Colorado where we use a lot of road salt and stuff, I just highly suggest it. All right, I, oops, dropped that thing. So I just wanna show you guys real quick what I mean by bottom first. So what I do is, is this kind of goes in and over the tire first, like that. And then like I said, you're gonna be bending these corners in to get them to go in. So what I did is I just paused it and bent it around the tire like that. And then you're pretty much just gonna go up in there like this. I mean, just push it up in there and then work the edges. You don't need to attach any fasteners ahead of time. Um, again, you can if you want to buy those fastener kits. You can put those clips on here and hold them on with the bolts. But what they're trying to do is get away from that, even the bolts rusting. So that's why you want to use those plastic clips because there won't be any rust coming down this black piece. Um, but it is some cheap insurance, guys. Again, that kit, depending on where you're at, you'll be under 200 bucks. Um, but it does protect it. And then in the event you have to get in there and work, you're not you know, trying to blast off caked on mud. So if you're a person that's out there driving through the construction site um, all the time, or you're an off-roader and you're getting those muddy, uh, farmer, um, somebody that's in the equestrian stuff, just about anybody that might get that dirty. But I mean, you should sell how dirty it was in like 200 miles, and I've already washed it twice. So, um, I'm just saying it's cheap insurance. I'm gonna put the link to the Husky Liners uh, website, but you have the part number. So what I would do is I would just get in the, the search engine and just say 
um, Husky liners part number if you're doing the Chevy and it's gonna be the same if you're doing the Ram the Ford or whatever go to Husky's website which I, that's the one I'll put on there type in your information they sell great four liners um, bed mats um, and these fender liners for just about everybody front and rear <clears throat> and uh, I hope this helps a lot guys uh, if you do me a favor down there in the corner is the subscribe so subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, especially if you're looking for new content on how this Chevy tows and everything like that. But this is must have accessory. I put them on every truck for probably the last six or seven years. If it didn't have them, I put them on there. And Husky brand versus say Rough Country or anybody else, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. I just go based on price. But what I will tell you is I've, I have consistent quality with, the, with Husky brand, so to each its own. Thanks a lot guys for being here and we'll see you on the next one.